Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. A recipe for pancakes call for one and a half teaspoons of sugar to make 12 pancakes. How many teaspoons of sugar should be used to make 20 pancakes? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. However, I'm going to encourage you not to use a calculator because I want to see if you can still calculate with fractions by hand. Okay, the calculations here are not that difficult. So this will be a nice kind of uh, check for understanding to see if you still remember how to deal with fractions. Okay, so I'm going to show you the right answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll walk through the complete solution step by step. But before we do that, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's take one more quick look at the question. So we have a recipe for pancakes and this recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons of sugar to make 12 pancakes. Now, just in case you don't know what a recipe is, that's basically just a set of directions uh, that you know we have to follow in order to cook something properly. And what we're trying to make here is pancakes. And now, of course, all of you out there hopefully know what a pancake is, but these uh, a pancake is effectively a nice little round thing. It's kind of like a waffle, but they are super delicious. So that is what a pancake is. All right, so back to the problem. So we have this recipe uh, to make pancakes, and of course we need a, one and a half teaspoons of sugar to make 12 pancakes. So the question is, how many teaspoons of sugar should be used to make 20 pancakes? All right, so let's go and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is two and one half teaspoons. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A+. Plus a 100% and multiple stars. Matter of fact, if I could, I'd give you a whole bunch of pancakes as well. But uh, that is very, very good if you got the right answer. Now, a lot of you are actually very familiar with how to use recipes. And you might be saying, yay, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is so easy for me because I've been cooking for years and years and years, and that is great. But uh, you may not even realize that you are a certified professional expert in the area of rates, ratios, and proportions, because really this is how we're going to solve this uh, problem uh, from a math standpoint, okay? And you should know these terms, and if you're completely lost, well, don't uh, despair. You'll be looking like this person in a few minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. So first things first, first we have a math word problem, and to always use the rule of three, and that's just basically read the problem at least three times before you start doing anything. Now, I've already read the problem a couple of times. Of course, I told you what a recipe is and what pancakes are, but just in case uh, some of you out there are students and you're sitting uh, you know, in a test or an exam and you don't know something about a question, raise your hand. You always try to get clarification, or if you're doing homework or a homework problem, you may have to stop and be like, I don't understand what this is. You can't solve a problem if you don't fully understand uh, the information in the problem and you can't answer a, a math problem unless you understand the question. So the question here is what? Uh, how many teaspoons of sugar uh, do we need to use to make 20 pancakes? Now, of course, in order to answer that question, uh, we have to refer back to the recipe. And the recipe says, hey, we need uh, one and a half teaspoons uh, to make 12 pancakes. So what we're doing here is we kind of have the comparison or a relationship between teaspoons and pancakes. And this concept in math is called a rate. So let's go ahead and get into that right now because we need to understand rates, ratios, and proportions to solve these type of problems uh, in mathematics. Now, of course, a lot of you out there know how to use uh, recipes and that is fantastic, but really fantastic. But what you're really uh, doing is you're using rates, ratios, and proportions. So let's do a quick review of what rates, ratios, and proportions are. Okay, so in uh, kind of very simple terms, this is gonna be a fast review. 
Rates and ratios are fractions. That's all they are. They're fractions. And uh, a proportion is nothing more than two equal fractions. So like if you have one half, let's think of another fraction that is equivalent to one half. How about like say three over six? So two equal fractions uh, is a uh, proportion. Now, because rates and ratios are themselves fractions, we can say that two equal rates and ratios uh, are a proportion as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and quickly define the difference between a rate and a ratio. So a rate would be something like miles per hour. So let's say a car goes 60 miles per hour. What does that really mean? Well, we're actually uh, making a comparison of 60 miles per one hour. So a car goes 60 miles per, and then the per part is the fraction bar, uh, every one hour. So we are comparing uh, distance uh, to time. See, this is a fraction, okay? So a rate is when you um, have a fraction where the numerator and denominator are comparing um, two different separate units of measure, okay? Something like miles per hour or gallons per minute. So let's say a pump uh, pumps 35 gallons per every one minute, okay? That's another example. We're comparing volume to time. All right, so that is what a rate is. And um, again, these terms you know, mean something uh, from a mathematical standpoint. So again, things like miles per hour, uh, you know, gallons per minute, uh, kind of a, a real great indicator to know if you're dealing with a rate or a ratio is that you'll have the word per in rates. Okay, so what is a ratio? So a ratio, an example of a ratio, uh, is like um, a teacher to student ratio. So teacher to student ratio. So let's say you have one teacher to 20 students, okay? Now, uh, I haven't even defined um, a ratio. So let's just go back to rates real quick, real, uh, real quick. So a rate is a fraction where the, uh, the numerator and denominator are comparing two different units of measure. So you might be thinking, hey, Mr. U2 Math Man, maybe ratios, you compare the same units of measure, you would be absolutely right. But some of you might be saying, well, what are you talking about teacher to student ratio? These are different units. No, no, uh, we're comparing people. Now, I know you may not think that teachers are actually people, but they are. So we're comparing human beings to human beings. So one person to 20 people, okay, is a student or a teacher to stu uh, student ratio. All right, so this is an example of a ratio. And uh, one of the ways that you know you're dealing with the ratio versus a rate is you'll hear that word too. Okay, so again, a proportion is two equal fractions or two equal rates or ratios. And we'll talk more about how uh, to solve proportions here in a second. Okay, so let's get into the rest of this problem. And uh, because now we know uh, a little something about rates and ratios and proportions, we need to start thinking about com uh, comparison, right? So the comparison is what? Well, we're comparing sugar, how much sugar is required uh, to make a certain amount of pancakes. So the recipe, can we have a recipe that actually tells us this, uh, you know, proportion, okay? We know how much sugar to it, uh, is required to make a certain amount of pancakes, right? Again, this is the recipe information. And what we're looking for is how much sugar to make 20 pancakes, right? So this is the question part. So you might be saying, all right, I know what to put here. And here, again, I'm giving you kind of a clue. This comes from the recipe, right? So we know that proportion. And then over here, we're looking for this amount of sugar uh, that is required to make 20 pancakes. All right, so uh, with that uh, being said, we can kind of go back to the problem and pull this specific information, right? So it takes one and a half teaspoons of sugar to make 12 pancakes. So up here, notice uh, uh, when I'm comparing these two fractions, right? that the numerators are the same units of measure. This is a very common thing uh, with proportions where people make mistakes. So sugar to pancakes to sugar to pancakes, not sugar to pancakes to pancakes and sugar. The, uh, the numerators, uh, units of measure have to be the same, um, uh, you know, across the, the equal sign, same thing with the denominator, okay? All right, so hopefully you know what to put in there. So how many teaspoons of sugar should we, uh, uh, should we use to make 20 pancakes? Okay, so hopefully this is starting to make sense. So now, now, now <laughs> excuse me, let's go ahead and plug in the information. All right, so it uh, uh, the recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons of sugar 
to make 12 pancakes. So we know this, right? This is the correct proportion to make these nice pancakes. So how many teaspoons of sugar do we need to make 20 pancakes? All right, so this is what we call a proportion. We are comparing uh, two rates in this uh, uh, circumstance because we're comparing sugar to pancakes, right? So two different complete uh, units of measure, but it works the same thing or the uh, proportions uh, work whether you're dealing with a rate um, or a ratio or just with numbers. Okay, so at this point in the problem, all we have to do is just kind of focus in on the actual uh, number and variable uh, parts, okay? So how do we solve a proportion? Well, the way you solve a proportion is by using something called the cross product, all right? Cross product, and uh, what does this mean? Well, product means multiplication and cross means crisscross. So uh, what this actually means is that if you have two equal fractions, i.e. a proportion, so like one half is equal to this fraction seven over 14, right? So if we cross multiply, what happens? Well, two times seven is what? Well, that is 14. And that happens to be equal to 1 times 14, which, of course, is 14. So anytime you have a proportion, the cross product is uh, true, or the cross, product, the cross products are equal. Okay, so now that you understand all of this, you should be able to solve this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you like how I sneak that in? I'm like... Yeah, I'm waiting. Well, that's a terrible uh, rendition of me, but I'm like this. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm just well, just waiting for that part of the video where I can say, hey, can you subscribe to my channel? Well, actually, I do need your help. So really, I need to put a nice little happy face like this. Now, I'm not afraid to ask for help, okay? And if you need help in math, don't be afraid to ask for help, okay? There's a lot of places out there you can get help. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of great YouTube videos and a lot of great information on the internet. And, you know, you should, you know, go to those uh, websites or those videos that, you know, that you can uh, connect with, right? The key is to find a teacher that you like and understand, right? But one of the things I want to caution you from if you're trying to learn math is this is not a fast process, right? Everyone wants to learn real quick. You're like, okay, hey, can you teach me calculus real quick? Uh, you know, I'd like to be able to do, you know, uh, you know, uh, integrals and derivatives and all this kind of crazy stuff like that. Uh, you know, I can't uh, possibly teach you something real quick. And what happens is a lot of people think that just because they understand a little bit about something, oh, okay, I get, I get that. I get the, you know, basics of it. They believe that they have learned everything they need to know about something. And that could get you in trouble big time, especially in math. If you truly want to learn math, you got to immerse yourself uh, in the topic. You need a great teacher, someone who's been around, you know, for a long time, has a lot of experience in this because, you know, uh, to really master concepts like rates, ratios, proportions, it requires a lot of instruction, you know, and then it requires a lot of practice. So hopefully, you know, if you do need to learn math, that's the approach you're taking. And if you need assistance, well, uh, check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to all those in the description below. But also, I do a ton of work on YouTube, but I need your help so I can reach more people that need assistance or just like math. And the best way you can support my channel is to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Thank you for giving me a little bit of time to uh, kind of explain why I do what I do. All right, now let's get back to this problem. All right, so now we have one and a half, uh, our recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons of sugar to 12 pancakes. So we know that, right? So we're looking for how much, uh, how many teaspoons of sugar to 20 pancakes. So again, we have a proportion and we're gonna focus on uh, uh, solving this proportion by using the cross product. So all we need is the values here, one and one half, 12, X and 20. So we're gonna cross multiply. So X times 12 is what? Well, that is 12 X and one and a half times 20 is what? Well, that's one and a half times 20. All right, so now uh, this is the exciting part of the problem where I said don't use a calculator. Now, of course you could use a calculator and do this really quick, but uh, let's go and do this without the aid of a calculator just to review fractions. So one and one half is what? Well, this is a mixed number fraction and we can write this as the improper fraction, three halves. Remember, we go two times one is two, plus one is three, so that's three over two, times 20. 
So two goes into 20, 10, 10 times three is 30. So that'll be the answer. But what, what we're doing here is we're multiplying uh, two fractions. So just in case you forgot, you multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So three times 20 is 60 divided by two. Of course, again, that is 30. All right, so our equation now is 3x, or sorry, 12x, excuse me. Let me kind of get myself some room here. Uh, 12x is equal to 30. So to solve for x, what do we have to do? Well, we have to divide both sides of the equation by 12, and you can see that right here. All right, so 12 divided by 12 is going to be 1x, or just x. So x is equal to 30 over 12. All right, now, if you had this as your answer, that's pretty good, but you are not done, okay? because this is a fraction and you always want to reduce fractions. So you might say, all right, three goes in here, uh, uh, 10, and three goes into 12, uh, four. So uh, here is my fraction, 10 over four. But you know, make sure you fully, fully uh, reduce a fraction. Sometimes we think that we have things fully reduced, but like, no, no, we can actually uh, divide 10 by uh, two, uh, that is five, and then four by two. So our fully reduced fraction is five halves. Okay, so x is equal to 5 halves, right? So that's the answer. But what does that mean? Well, remember, uh, x is what? x is the amount of teaspoons needed to make 20 pancakes. Now, would you ask your friend in the kitchen, hey, can you pass me, uh, you know, 5 halves of a teaspoon of sugar so we can make this 20 pancakes? Well, no, you probably want to, you know, give them a better, more understandable answer. So let's take that 5 halves and uh, actually write this as a mixed number fraction, okay? So how do we do that? Well, we take five and we divide it by two. So we have to go back to like, you know, old school, basic elementary level, primary level division. Okay, so let's go and do this. This will be a lot of fun here. So five divided by two. Okay, so two goes into five, how many times? Well, two times, so two times two is what? Four, we have, uh, we subtract here, so that's one. So we have a remainder of one. So we're gonna write that as uh, one over two. So two and one half. So that is how many teaspoons we need to make these 20 pancakes. All right, so again, you know, we covered a lot of ground here. A lot of you, again, you know how to cook and how to use recipes. You're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you made this problem so much more difficult. I can make these pancakes, one, two, three. You know, I'm pretty sure you can, right? But the whole point here is understanding these concepts so you can do more, in, uh, you know, challenging math word problems, okay? So again, you know, um, when it comes to math, you know, don't feel bad or don't feel shy about, you know, doing basic kind of problems, things that are easy for you. That's a good place to start. Be like, all right, yes, don't just assume that you can do, uh, that you already know how to do easy problems because you have like easy problems, mid-level problems, and then more like difficult problems, right? So a lot of people are like, oh yeah, this is easy stuff. I already know that. And then they get into, they want to kind of you know, do more difficult or mid-level problems. But that's not, uh, that's not a good approach, okay? Go back and check yourself. Make sure you can be, oh, yes, yes, in fact, that you do have all the skills to do these problems and just kind of take things one step at a time. All right, now, specifically, if you need help with rates, ratios, and proportions, definitely check out, like, my pre-algebra or Algebra 1 course. Uh, you'll find links to those in the description below. And if you're not a student and you want to learn this stuff, well, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I'll pretty much teach you everything from basic math to even some basic trigonometry and a ton of algebra and geometry in between. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.